A missed opportunity for the Seahawks at home. Seattle could not make up for a slow start and lost 30-24 against Carolina. We're in fourth quarter, it's 2017, you know, and, and so uh, from there we had to finish the game and we, you know, we had a few chances and we weren't able to get it together enough to get it done. Right out of the gate, Seattle ran into trouble. After scoring on their opening drive, Carolina picked off the first Geno Smith pass attempt of the day and found the end zone on the next play. You know, JC made a great play. Uh, he's a really good player. Um, you know, he made a great play. It happens in the NFL. You know, it was the first play of the game. Obviously, you don't want to start that way, but I feel like, uh, you know, we responded well and we had more opportunities, you know, late in the game to really win it. And uh, we, we just couldn't get it done. And uh, that's unfortunate. You know, it pains me to even say that because, uh, you know, we, we want to take those steps forward. But, you know, today it's got to be a learning lesson for us. We got to learn from it. Uh, we got to figure it out and get better. Seattle was forced to dig out of a 17 nothing hole. Tyler Lockett closed the gap on a second quarter touchdown. He sets the franchise record with a touchdown now in six consecutive games. Oh, he's been amazing. He just has. And, and I mean, there's this, I don't even know the, what are all the accolades that you can pull up for him that we haven't already said. I don't know. But he's been a great player and, and uh, continues to be. I just give God all the glory, man. Like, just thankful to still be here going into year eight. Um, like I said, like, not too many people can play on the same team. Um, for eight years or even through the course of their career. And so just very thankful that I got the opportunity just to be able to be here. I'm just trying to be able to be the best that I can each and every day, um, getting opportunities to do things that um, I haven't got to do in a while as a receiver, getting a chance to run different routes, catch the ball in um, different types of ways. And so every day I just try to be able to be better and go out there and, and see how great that I could be before um, I end up retiring one day. The Hawks next drive though ended in disappointment and frustration. Thinking he had a free play, Gino lets it fly, but it's the Panthers who make the play and are awarded the interception. Um, that's, that's one where we got to learn from it. Can't make excuses. Uh, it happened. And so the reason I threw that ball in the, in the traffic was because I, you know, I felt like we had a free play and it was an opportunity to, you know, you know, if they intercept it, then, you know, obviously it comes back and we get the five yards, but that didn't happen. Um, maybe they didn't see it. So, uh, can't make an excuse about it and just got to learn from it. Seattle still manages to pull within a score before half and the momentum felt like it was turning after the pass rush started affecting Sam Darnold. I guess kind of stopped the run a little bit, you know, to create those third and long situations um, or second and long situations where we knew they were going to pass. Um, we were able to kind of read the boots a little, a little more. They were booting a lot more. We were able to get pressure on them that way. But the story of the game can be told in rushing yards. 223 for Carolina, just 46 for Seattle. Came in with a game plan, stuck with it, and kept running, kept running, hoping like, hey, y'all going to mess up. Or somebody's going to be out the gap. And they stuck to their game plan. At the end of the day, it's man on man. You whoop your man in front of you, and you make the tackle. And that's, that's, what, that's what it comes down to. Seattle's defense was without Shelby Harris, who was sick. Al Woods left the game with a heel injury and didn't play in the second half. With both of those guys out, there was a big hole in the Hawks defense. It hurts, you know, having that big fella out there. He eats up a lot of guys, but, you know, we got a lot of guys who need to got to step up. We got to step up, got to answer the call. Yeah, it's tough when you got those two big dogs not, you know, missing the game, um, especially with a physical team like this. But like I said, I always say this is always next man up mentality. When you got guys who practice the same, you know, who lift the same, who do all that same, you expect them to go in there and dominate with, with no drop off. So, um, you know, we miss those two big guys. Hopefully we get them back for Thursday night. Meanwhile, injuries at running back hampered Seattle's rushing attack, but give Carolina credit. They were schemed up coming off a of bye week. It's always going to be a challenge when you don't have your top three backs, but um, the guys who were in there, Homer, um, Tony and, uh, you know, Iggy, they all stepped up. You know, Iggy had some some great plays on special teams. You know, Tony was one or two you know blocks away from a big play or a big catch. And so all those guys, we got trust in all the guys. It's always next man up. Um, obviously, we, we, we love our guys and we want them back healthy. But, um, you know, all the other guys stepped up and we just got to do better overall. Marquise Goodwin continues to be a bright spot and a go to for Geno Smith. Marquise has been he's been great all year and uh, he was he was phenomenal today. He got us going. He's so dynamic. Uh, he's a really good receiver. I'm just happy for him to you know, be a part of this team and happy to have him because you can see how special he is out there. 
Um, he's so tough, man. He makes all the, all the plays that, you know, you wouldn't ex expect a guy with his size to make. He plays big. And so um, really fortunate to be able to play with Marquise and uh, look forward to, you know, just having more opportunities. I mean, I think he's brought stability. I think he's brought um, excitement. I mean, you've seen that last play when he caught the ball. Um, JC was able to hit him, and he bounced off of him, was able to make a move and go score. I mean, um, he's so quick. He's so fast. Like, um, we can be able to use him a lot within our explosive plays. You know, once he gets the ball, he's real dynamic in the way that he runs the ball. And um, especially when you look at us passing the ball, if teams try to take DK away or take me away, like you still have a lot of other great players that we can be able to utilize to be able to help us out. And um, Keys did a really great job just being able to help us um, on those third downs and just those big catches as well. Gino finished the day completing 21 of 33 pass attempts for 264 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions. I feel like I was up and down, had some, had some good plays, had some not so good plays. and. Um, it's the NFL. Nobody, nobody's perfect. Um, you know, I, I don't expect to come out here and be perfect, but I do have a standard, and uh, you know, I don't think I played to that standard quite today. The frustration was evident after the loss, but there is no time to dwell on it. San Francisco comes to town Thursday night. Frustrating. Just frustrating. This is just <laughs> you got like those games we need, like, and it's frustrating because it's on it's on that back end stretch. You know what I mean? And. That's the thing, you just gotta convey the message across the you know, guys on the team, young guys on the team, is that this is this is the season. Like this is when the season starts. It didn't start in week one, it didn't start in week five, it started now, because this is where you play ball, you know what I mean? And that just that's something you look at in the league, period. In the beginning of the season, you know, people get excited about teams. I don't give a shit about the beginning of the season because it comes down to stuff like this, and this is where it all matters. So it's frustrating, but it's just frustrating. We got the guys and we shown the world that we got it, but it's just like we gotta put it together. At, at times that it matters, you know what I'm saying? And it's when you look across the locker room, I mean, even when I look at it now, I still think we're a playoff caliber team. I still think we got guys that can maybe, I still think we can go toe to toe with anybody, but it's just, it makes it frustrating because you want it so damn bad. And it's just like, you know, when it doesn't, when it doesn't come together, it just, it just makes you upset. So we just gotta find, we gotta find a solution. We gotta find it yesterday because it's time is now point blank period. Fourth quarter of the season right now coming up and uh, it's gonna kind of turn around really fast against a really good club and we gotta get our act together. Seattle looks to get back on track later this week against the division opponent following a 30-24 loss against Carolina.